Well, good day. My name is Tony Botting. I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. Today we'll talk about SolidWorks Motion and we'll run through an example motor torque and power. The objectives of this simulation are, are overall just to show the ease of use of SolidWorks Motion. And we'll be demonstrating motor functionality. We'll be demonstrating the function builder, getting some useful output, and we'll compare that to hand calculations. So what we're looking at here is a two and a half foot diameter solid aluminum drum and the customer specifications are to accelerate the drum from 0 to 100 RPM inside of 10 revolutions. Uh, the output required is the torque and the power required to do that and what we'll do is assume no friction in this model and we can add some more power if we need to overcome friction. So I'll start out with a list of knowns and unknowns. On the left side I've written down the unknowns. We have the torque. We want to uh, determine the power required to torque this drum up to speed. So on the right side the knowns are the moment of inertia of the drum. Uh, the initial speed is zero. We're going to speed this up. The omega final here is equal to 100 rpm. I've converted that to 10.5 radians per second and also 600 degrees per second. The number of revolutions to get this up to speed is 10. So that's 62.8 radians and 3600 degrees. So also we know some kinematic equations. You can get these from any textbooks or work them out. Uh, speed at any point in time squared is equal to the initial speed squared plus twice the angular acceleration times the angular distance that it goes through. So that's alpha and theta. And of course the speed is equal to the initial speed plus the angular acceleration times time. So we can go in here and I'll go ahead and write down what we know about torque and we can write down those equations. We know that is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration and the power we know that is equal to the torque times the speed. So I've worked out angular acceleration here just omega squared over 2 theta that's about 0.872 radians per second squared and that's right at 50 degrees per second squared so we can plug that in to get the torque so that's moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. We're getting about 59 newton meters. That's about 43 pound feet. We can go ahead now and solve and look at the power. That's uh, that 58.7 times the final speed, 10.47 radians per second. That comes out to about 614 watts or about 0.82 horsepower. So that is a peak horsepower again because our, our speed is changing with time. So our power requirements change all the way up to the maximum amount. What is also of interest is to solve for the time variable because we'll be putting that in SOLIDWORKS motion. So we'll use equation 2 here and solve for the time variable that's right at 12 seconds. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get this going. What we'll look at is the motion study here. I've already got one done. I'll just right click and create a new one. And we'll change the drop down here to be motion analysis. Okay, so we'll just need to add a motor. I'll look on the toolbar. There's a motor and we want to put a rotary motor on and it's requesting the location. So I'll just select this end here. And in the motion pull down, we're not going to use constant speed because we want to actually accelerate it. So I'll just key in some points on the data points. This is using the function builder. Here's our function builder and I'm going to choose inputs of velocity and time. Uh, you can do other types of inputs. But we'll go ahead and fit this onto a linear ramp. And I'll start out at 0 seconds at 0 degrees per second. And we know at 12 seconds we need to get to 600 degrees per second. And there's our linear ramp and you can see there's our acceleration in degrees per second squared. I'll go ahead and add one more row. Let's run this out to 14 seconds and keep the uh, speed there at 600 degrees per second. So that's all you need to do on the function builder. I'll click OK. Let me zoom to fit. And we need to tell the analysis to run out. So I'll go ahead and run out to 12 seconds or 14 seconds. And that's all we need to do. We've got the rotary motor in place. I'll click the calculate button. And it starts accelerating. It's very gradual acceleration and the uh, final rotation rate is only you know, 1.7 revs per second. Okay, now we'll look at some results. That's all done. 
So all you need to do is go over to the graphing panel here, results and plots. And we'll look at the acceleration and velocity, for example. We'll select the subcategory. Let's look at angular velocity. And we'll look at the magnitude. And it wants to know the component, so I'll just select this and we'll click OK. So there's a check on angular velocity, 0 to 600 and holding constant. Let's do the acceleration. There's our angular acceleration at 50 degrees per second squared. And these are holding these uh, charts for you down in the results folder here. If you expand that with the plus sign, they show up here as grayed out and you can right click and show them if you need to. And of course we need to know the, the torque to drive this. Let's go look at that. The category in this case will be a force type of category and we'll look at the motor torque. And we'll do the magnitude and if you hover over the blue bo input box here it says select rotational motor object so I'll do that and we'll click OK and there's your torque we see we did the hand calculation we got 58.7 so that's 59 that's Newton meters and then it drops off and finally we can look at the power momentum energy power look at power consumption and again we'll select the motor and there we have it so power consumption goes up uh, of course the speed is changing up to 609 watts so just as a review here's the hand calculation sheet and we're showing uh, the torque is 58.7 newton meters and the software gave us 59 for the power, the peak power, we calculated 614, the software calculated 609, and that's less than 1% uh, difference. So you can trust the software, and we hope you like this brief introduction of SolidWorks Motion, and please call us if you have any questions. Uh, once again, I'm Tony Botting at Go Engineer, and have a great day.